tonight, the Stig drives some very fast farm equipment, I hail a taxi, and finishing with something that I'm reliably informed is a bit of a fan favourite around here. I'm Chris Harris, and this is the Top Gear Horizon Special. Ah yes, the Stig, our very own UFO, unidentified fast object, the world's least obedient racing driver. Hang on a minute, what on earth is the Stig up to? This is a track car. It's even lower than a normal, at least. And that suspension is seriously stiff. It is small, I suppose. Great for flowing through traffic or trees. You've got it. The trick with drifting is to not actually spin, but to almost spin for as long as possible. Honourable art of drifting. Well, they did say to use the fastest route possible, and if there's one thing faster than a racing line, it's a straight line. You've got to hand it to the stick. script now if you don't mind this is top gears track tour it's a tractor obviously but with a 5.7 liter chevy v8 making 500 horsepower and here comes the stig again farm stig born in a barn they say weaned by pigs can plow a field in under six seconds There's a speed camera on the M68. Rumour has it, it only flashes above 87.2 miles an hour. Our tractor has been officially clocked at 87.2 miles an hour, making it the world's fastest tractor. But I reckon it'll go even faster. Ah, listen to that. The soothing sounds of the countryside. Birds singing, cows mooing, a Chevy small block firing through a pair of smokestacks. Turn around. It is safe to do so. Turn around when it is safe to do so. Steady on, stick. Those are 54 inch mud tires, remember? They get a bit squishy through the corners. Nobody needs to get the harvest in that quickly. Right, here comes the speed camera. Hope they put some film in it. Wow! Have you ever seen anything like it? That's a new tractor speed record and some impressively fast farming. If you want to spread slurry in a hurry, you know what you need. Now though, it's time to hail a ride in something completely different. So here we are then. In the old days, daredevils used smooth, sandy beaches like this to see how fast their cars could go. 
Many early land speed records were set on beaches. Miles of space, nothing to hit. Sounds easy, right? Oh, look at that! Laying some pretty squirmy tracks there, Stiggy. That's what happens with 750 horsepower on sand. But that's the challenge here. Go as fast as possible all the way to the top of the beach. The thing is, there's something I haven't told the stick. Record rules say you must do two runs, one in each direction, before the clock runs out. Which means, Stiggy, pulling off the world's swiftest U-turn, which of course is when the handbrake comes in handy. from the stick there. Mini cab, maximum speed. Next time I need a ride to the airport, I know who I'm calling. And all of this off-road action has given me an idea. This is Project EAT. That's EAT for E-Class All-Terrain. It's a modified Merc built by the Top Gear magazine team for finding bears in the woods. Not many bears around here, though. Mostly badgers. Still, there's definitely some terrain. Lots of it. All you need is a good sense of direction. Or not. Here's Stig again, looking lost. Terrified of maps, apparently. Inner compass points directly south. The EAT has a silky smooth V6 diesel. It'll do 155 miles an hour on the road, but where we're going, we won't need roads. First up, it's a trip to the top of Glen Rannoch, by any means necessary, and against the clock, naturally. But don't worry, it has knobbly tyres, and a roof rack for carrying extra knobbly tyres. In 400 metres, turn left. Turn left. says you need an SUV to go off-road. The EAT has four-wheel drive and air suspension to smooth out lumps and bumps and everyday obstacles. Ancient burial mounds, for example. Turn around when it is safe to do so. Recalculating route. In 200 metres, turn right. That's some proper hang time. Actual air suspension. In 200 metres, turn left. Well, it is a Mercedes wagon, so it's tough. And if you really want to smash stuff up, there's even a pickaxe in the back. In 200 metres, turn left. In 200 metres, turn right. It also has 340 horsepower, more torque than a cruise ship, and gets to 60 miles an hour in just over five seconds. to head way over there, to the very top of Arthur's seat. But first, what goes up must come down. Turn around. 
found when it is safe to do so. Recalculating route. Charges for almost anything you can charge. Cozy ambient lighting, even a portable espresso machine. Everything the intrepid explorer can ever need. At the roundabout, take the first exit. Meters, turn right. Turn right. All right, all this adventure kits had a tiny effect on the fuel efficiency. Good job the roof rack holds two cans of diesel, and there's another one in the back. Just don't confuse them with your drinking water. That's a four wheel drive car on mud tires, completely sideways. You'd do well in rallying with skills like that. Top draw drifting, I reckon. Exit. On to the final stretch now. Just the small matter of getting up Arthur's seat. The clock's ticking, so better step on it, Stiggy. In 200 meters, turn left. Turn left. And there we go. The top of Arthur's seat. No idea who Arthur is, by the way, or why his seat's so big. Nice view, though. Shame there's no time to stick around. We've got everything we need here. An airfield, the original rapid runabout, and the stick. I'm looking forward to this. Look at that! Laying down some rubber there. Not that it has much to lay. After all, tiny wheels mean tiny tyres. Lovely work there. Short wheelbase, front wheel drive. It's really not an easy car to slide, this. This little mini punch is well above its weight. It's literally unstoppable. Forget rallying, this thing was made for demolition derbies. but it's maxi on the inside. Want to guess the world record for the most people crammed inside one? I'll tell you, it's 27. Gymnasts. No idea if they'll come one piece.
Come on, tell us, Dig, we're done now. It's time for a spot of sightseeing. Here we are then, Edinburgh, where it's time for a spot of turbocharged tourism with this, the mighty Porsche GT2 RS. All we need now is our tour guide, Muck Stig, the world's worst Scotsman, allergic to tartan, absolutely petrified of bagpipes, or so I've heard. Right, let's see if we can visit every bell tower in Edinburgh and get back here before they all stop ringing. In 400 metres, turn left. Perfect there. It's wider than a regular 911, this GT2, and about 20 times more terrifying. Basically, the perfect device for nipping in and out of city traffic. What a car this is. 3.8 litre flat six, two turbo, 700 horsepower, all wrapped up in carbon fibre with wings, stripes, holes, and vents for snorting in the air. Nippy little thing, isn't it? Zero to 60 takes 2.7 seconds. Just the job for a bit of speedy sightseeing. Legal, but it's only a pair of fireproof underpants away from being a full-blown racing car. In 200 metres, turn right. Turn right. Turn right. At the roundabout, take the second exit. It's a real masterpiece of engineering, this GT2 RS. The wheels are made from magnesium, the exhaust is titanium. It's exotic, savage and utterly bonkers. I love it! Excellent hooliganry. That's what 700 horsepower and rear-wheel drive will do for you, if you have the guts for it, and an effective laundry detergent. It's limited to 211 miles an hour, any faster, and it would need special tyres. But with the stick behind the wheel, who knows? Remember to park properly at the end and watch out for traffic wardens. Good work. Hard on those carbon ceramic brakes now. They can stop a locomotive dead in its tracks. I told you we'd finish with a fan's favourite, and here it is. No, not the lorry, the thing on the back, under the tarp. You'll love it. But first we need to move it into position. Thankfully, we have our very own haulage expert, a trucker's trucker. No load too large. Yes, it's Big Rig Stig. Right, now take it easy, Stig. That's some expensive cargo you have back there. Costs as much as a house. 
and weighs about the same too. What it is yet? Okay, there are some cryptic clues. It's all wheel drive, but not four wheel drive. It's a wagon, but you definitely don't need a horse to pull it. Hmm. In 200 meters, turn left. Turn left. Five tons of flatbed carrying four tons on its back. Don't you just hate getting stuck behind a slow, lumbering old... Wait a minute. It's actually accelerating. Up a hill. I guess that's what 900 foot-pounds of torque does for you. That plus trucker stick. It is safe to do so. Good job, Big Rig Stick. Suits you, you know. Although, come to think of it, maybe pickups are more your style, especially the one we have in store. Turn around. I give you the Mercedes G63 AMG 6x6. It's the ultimate off-roader, a four-ton, six-wheel sports utility truck. Basically, a G-Wagon with the back half of a pickup thrown in for free. Up front is a 5.5-litre twin-turbo V8. Usually, it's limited to 100 miles an hour, but not this one. In 100 metres, turn right. With all of the wheels comes all of the grip. The 6x6 turns mountains into motorways. Is there anything it can't conquer? Oh, someone call air traffic control. I'm pretty sure you need a special license to fly one of these. Route. It makes 536 horsepower and more than 760 newton meters of torque. With that speed limiter removed and with the stick behind the wheel, it'll do 125 miles an hour. With a bit of a runner. It's tough, the 6x6. After all, it was originally made for the Australian Army. It's basically a tank. With heated seats. In 200 meters, turn left. It can wade through a meter of water, this thing. Most cars need full scuba kit at that depth. Ridiculous. In 200 meters, turn left. Top job there, Stig. Take some roll. 
no idea what this thing does with the uh, experimental dance. Goat, yoga, bog snorkeling. Anyway, I've been Chris Harris, still am, and this has been the Top Gear Horizon Special. Thanks for coming. Now, let's go see what this Forza Thon Live thing's all about.